Hey, what's up? This is Sugar from Sound Candy Studio. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at a product called EXO. It's by XLN Audio. Now, I really do like this product, and I've said that about a few products, but I really do like this one. So, see you in a moment. Welcome back. Right, let's take a look at this product. Now, this product is called, it's by XLN Audio and it's called EXO. Uh, now, essentially, this product is a repository for your one shots. And what I mean by that, this is a home for your one shots. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the interface on the, in the center here. Uh, I'm going to call this space the XO space. I've been trying to shoehorn that in for ages now, been able to do it right. Um, left hand side, let's have a look at that. On the left hand side, you have eight uh, slots. Slots. And these eight slots uh, obviously represent these slots for your sounds, these sounds. Uh, yeah, those ones. Uh, and on the top right hand side here, you have space, which is this window here. Then we have edit, then we have our play and our transport controls here. Uh, incidentally, if you are using a DAW, if you just hit the uh, sync host sync, that will sync it to your host. And then this allows it to play when you hit your space bar. And if you don't want to play the uh, DAW and you simply want to play the EXO um, uh, plugin, simply just hit that play button there. Then you have on the top right hand side here, you have a list of where all of your uh, presets are going to sit. So these are your, your sample holders for your sequencer. Uh, that's there. The hair allows you to upload and download your samples and also export. So we'll, ex we'll speak about that shortly. Obviously here you have your um, search icon. This is the uh, upload icon for your saving. This would do that. And then just, just on the tab is just a small bit about the plugin itself. Um, Incidentally, below here, you'll see that you have this similarity option. Now, if you look at where my pointer is, if I'm on a an anywhere, so where so if you have a look here, you can see two kicks, uh, you notice that they're red. So anything in that section there is going to be a kick. Then obviously, as you can see, the blues, uh, the yellows, the greens, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But where we are here, the reason why I mentioned it is because if we go to something like that, uh, it's on this kick. If we want to find similar sounds to that, we'll simply scroll across here and do that. However, we're going to come back to this in a minute. Uh, let's finish going to have a look at these. So we're in, we're in our space. Uh, we're going to hit the edit button. So this is where we edit the individual samples themselves. Below that, uh, we have a global or uh, specific. So this is your global section here. But below these icons here, so we're on the kick, we can do things like panning. So if we hit the kick button, uh, and also these are these will obviously be mapped to your MIDI device, your keyboard or your controller. But if we hit that, we can do things like pan it left and right. We can do envelopes, pitch, tone, cuts, uh, velocity sensitive, playback, and our two sends. Now, incidentally, on the playback, I do like the fact that we can output this to any of one one of eight buses, and the bus and your master. So that, I think that's a really good idea. I uh, love that feature there. Uh, let's carry on. Let's go and have a look through. Below, we can see these tiny tabs here. We have our, our beat combiner. Uh, and this is where it will play your sequences of your beat. So this is your MIDI beat combiner. So currently we are playing this one here, but we can do random ones by clicking on the finger and it will play them. And I will explain and we'll, when we go through and do some samples, we'll play some samples, we'll see how that works. Uh, up here we have our sample con container whereby so if we are on the kick drum here, we can see if we can add and take away samples as we like. That's straightforward. So if we were to play this sample here, let's play that for a second. You can hear what it does. There you go, so you will understand what it does. Incidentally, um, if you look on the right-hand side here, we have our groove editor and we have the nudge editor there, uh, groove selection down here, and accentuator. So, for instance, if we were to change the accent of this uh, kick drum here, we will just go in and we're on, currently on the eighth, so if we go in and we can accent that. So if we play it, we can hear that. There we go, we can hear that. Uh, incidentally, once you have finished on this particular section, you can just click the green icon and that will commit that to the save. Um, down on the bottom left-hand side, I should have mentioned this before, this is a similarity pattern editor. Well, not an editor, but a similarity pattern. So if you click on a pattern, so if we go back to our space and we click on any pattern, so we are currently on this bang flap. Let's play that. And then if we wanted to 
find something which is also very very similar to it, we'll just slide along and do that. Uh, you can see this little um, asterisk here. That means we've made some changes to the sample and it's asking us, would we like to save? So we can actually, we can either save or overwrite the one that we're on, but we're not going to do either of those. We're going to let that stay for a bit. Uh, we notice that when I click, I move the window. If we want to resize this window or zoom in, we can simply click on the icon here to zoom in and click, click on the icon to zoom out. And then we can just see the whole map. I actually think this map looks like the map of a world, which is great. Uh, the other thing I do really love about this is the fact that it isn't uh, when you load your samples up into it it isn't um, um, visually uh, stimulating in the sense that you can see a sample called kick uh, underscore one blah 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 I love the fact that it doesn't do that because that's not what this is about this is a, a program about discovery it's about discovering new sounds so uh, I don't want uh, those titles to be in here I just simply want to scour this map and find a sound and say yep I love that and let's commit that sound um Speaking about uh, committing sounds, if you have a sample folder with uh, one shots in it, you simply drag it to this area here. It will then save and index those into the constituent parts. So your kicks, your snares, your highs, your opening, your closed. It will do all that for you. So you don't need to do it. And it does it lightning fast. Uh, so don't worry about that. The program itself is really, really light in terms of a uh, physical footprint. It loads up really quickly. So if I um, click anywhere on this map, watch how quickly we can... We can do that. Uh, and it's not loading up. It's, I don't know how they've done it, but they've done it so that it loads up real quick. Uh, right. OK, enough talking for me. I will explain a few more things. Uh, the other thing I should have said uh, before I carry on is if we are playing loop and we want to audition a live sound. So let's say, for instance, what's the blue one? Snare drums. So if we wanted to go to this stop that while I tell you if we want to go if we want to click on the snare drum and we want to find a different snare drum like audition those in the whilst the, the track is actually playing we'll do this we'll simply click on it Once we find the location of the sound that we want, we can either stick with it or we can carry on and find some similar ones. So let's just stick with it for a second. Now let's go and find some similar sounds. Once we find the sound that we want, we just click on this tiny little icon here and it commits that sound. And that's all there is to it. That is really all there is to it. Uh, and whilst we are here, we can then do, let's just go and do, let's just try and pitch that particular snare drum. Let's pan it. And that really is as quickly as it can. If we wanted to even change the way that that snare drum comes in, let's go and add, let's change the sequence. That's how simple it is, and that's how quick it is. So, so let's just say that we have made this uh, sound and we want to find something similar. So it's going to look at uh, similar patterns and it's going to still use the same sequence, uh, uh, the same sequence formula that we used before. Let's try that. Okay, so let's just say we've got we're on this journey of discovery and we said, yeah, you know what? We really like what we've got there. Let's export this out. So we're going to go to this icon here. We're going to click on it and then we're going to say render uh, to wave. This is how I'm going to normally do it. However, there is a separate way to do it. We can actually just take the MIDI out. We just drag and drop. So we've rendered this out. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've got two sections. We have the raw section, which is the unprocessed section. Then we have our process section. Now we can either do one of two things well one of three or four things we can grab out just the just the snare just the high just the kick individually and drag and drop them onto our uh, onto our session or as i like to do i'm going to scroll up to where i've got my drum loop here i'm going to grab this and simply drop this on 
and it's that simple. I mean, come on, it's just that simple. We could we could we could do that to the MIDI. Uh, I mean, come on, this is just ridiculously simple. Uh, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete. Oh, actually, uh, why this is important? If we drag that sample out, let's just say we've dragged that sample out. That sample is uh, currently four uh, bars long. Um, so we've grabbed that one. Let's do something else. Let's keep that pattern that we've just dragged up. Let's add a variant to it. So let's play it for a second. So we want to add a variance. Let's just add this. Let's just do this to see what it sounds like. Okay, so if that's, if that's the second one that we wanted to add, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go up to here. We're going to render that wave because it's because it's now a new uh, pattern. And we've rendered it out. We're going to drag and we're going to simply drop this one on. So now what we should get is when we play that loop, let's go in and turn down XO so it doesn't play. And let's just make sure this is actually on. Now let's listen to this now. Let's see what we've got here. So that's a way that you can build a bridge and make some changes to your samples. It's a really simple way to make a really quick changes. Now, remember what we said that what we the other thing we could have done, we actually could have gone in and dragged each one of these out. So you can see where I've created a kick, snare, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, percussions, clap, crash. We could just drag these in as well. And I like doing that. You know, I like having things separate so I have much more control over them. Uh, so that's that. And I mean, this makes it really, really simple, but that's not just it. Uh, what we're going to do, the, the whole idea of this is that, is that essentially you can click on any one of these. Uh, let's just actually turn that back up because I've made that mistake. Uh, let's just turn that back up. The idea is that you can click on these, these individual sounds uh, and just find new sounds for your beat. So we've got that, uh, we have our loop playing in the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to just slide through some of these sounds uh, and see if we can find some inspiration. <laughs> Now, remember we said earlier that as long as this is tempo, uh, as long as we have our sync uh, uh, connected to our door and we have it to the, the possibility that it will play when we hit the space bar. Uh, that's why I like this. But you can, as I said before, detach this. So you can actually unsync it because many of these samples, that th these uh, sequences that we're playing are not meant to be played at 94. However, uh, the reason for this experiment is so that we can take something that's not meant to be played at 94 beats per minute and make it fit our track. So let's, we're going to go through, cycle through and listen to some of them now. So for instance, let's just say we like this one called Bittersweet, but not we, we're looking for some additional changes. So we're going to cycle through similar to. And that's the thing I really do like about this. I like the fact that uh, we're playing this this uh, sample and we can have various different sounds coming in and coming out. We can have various different styles being applied to this. Let's carry on, let's just uh, find something. We're currently on Bittersweet, let's just carry on and see what else we got. <laughs> So the reason why I love this is because, you know, when you're making a track, some of these, so you're doing a hip hop track, this says Brazilian house. Listen to the Brazilian house. That'd make a great break in your track for you. Uh, and the, the one of the reasons why I love this is it, it allows me to um, create something that I probably wouldn't have thought of. So we'll carry on and we'll, you'll see what I mean. Now, 
Now, obviously, they're not all going to work, but you get the you get the gist of this. And the idea is is that you go through and you just let this thing do its thing. Now, obviously, you have lots of control over it, as in you can go into a, a sample do all the tweaks that you want to do, change the sequence of pattern. You can do all of that. There's not a problem with that. Uh, but what I do like is the fact that you can go in and let this thing play. And just normally I'm not a... Um, uh, when pro programs come with these pre-ordained um, patches, I generally don't go for them myself. But on this one, I really do like it. I also like... Let's just go through. Let's listen to this. Um, let's listen to some of the effects here. Let's change that. I really, I, I, I'm telling you, man, I really do like this. Just, just, just keep going through for a second. So we have our low and high cut here. Without making this video too long, because you know I like to play <laughs> when I find a bit of software and I really do like it, I just like to play. But anyway, uh, that's generally what this program does. It is available on Windows and Mac, uh, AAX, uh, VST, VST3, um, Windows. There's also a demo of it. Uh, I think, if if I'm right in saying, it's about €179. Euros. I'm not sure what that is in US dollars or even pounds sterling for that matter. However, it is a brilliant piece of programming uh, whoever the guys at excellent audio have done a fantastic job i love this and i love it for a couple of reasons one of the reasons i do love it as i said before these things just appear as dots uh, and what these dots do is they they forbid you from simply going into a sample folder and using the stuff that's in that sample folder what it allows you to do is literally just do this by ear that's the, that's the idea is it's not that you go in and you say I want to add a sample pack now I did mention that I added a sample pack before uh, and if we go into my library I've got one sample pack and it's a ninth wonder drum kit now all I had to do is drag the folder onto this uh, Excel space and it then added my kicks and my hi-hats and my snares however it didn't tell me where it added them to so they're in here somewhere and that's what i like about it okay that's it for me um do check this do check this out i will leave all the links in the description for the product and where you can go and get a download of it a demo uh, and that's it for me take care see you later bye bye